Hey everyone, it's nice to meet you. My name's Jeff. I'd like to tell you that I worked as an intern for Pixar, and that is kind of true, but I wasn't doing voice acting or storyboard or anything fun or cool like that. No, uh, I, I was more or less the guy who bought the coffee. I would love to tell you I did more glamorous things than that and scrubbing the floors and cleaning out the bathrooms, but no, that is really all that I did for Pixar. But while I did that, I overheard some rather interesting news. Fact of the matter is, Pixar wasn't always owned by Disney. In fact, Disney bought Pixar back in 2006. You might have already known this, but it is kind of cool that Pixar had already launched off the ground without the help of the almighty Disney, who actually was struggling at the time with their Country Bears movies and things like that. They were producing box office flops, which is not typical for a company as large and successful historically as Walt Disney. Anyway, Disney's happy now. They own Pixar. You might have heard about Monsters, Inc. It stars John Goodman and Billy Crystal, not on the screen, of course, but as voice actors. John Goodman voices James P. Sully Sullivan, a huge, furry, blue bear-like monster with horns, a tail, purple spots. You know, he might be really good at frightening the kids, but he's actually a big, jolly guy, just like he is in real life. Then you have Billy Crystal's character, Michael Mike Wazowski, a little chubby green monster, kind of like a cyclops, you know, those short limbs that, well... Maybe not so much short, but he doesn't exactly have a lot of muscle on them. Thinking back to those films, I really do like the Monsters, Inc. movies, but one time, while I was sitting in a closet of all things, I overheard a couple people at Pixar talking about some really big stuff. I'm not going to tell you that I knew everyone at Pixar, but I did know another guy named Jeff, and he actually did story work. They were talking about things that were beyond the current Monsters, Inc. project. They were talking about going big. I mean large. They were talking about taking their ideas and moving them beyond the big screen and onto the small screen. They were going to make television programs out of these Pixar classics. You know, they were going to have a Toy Story cartoon that aired. They are going to have a Monsters, Inc. cartoon, Cars, uh, Bugs Life. All of these were going to come to the small screen. Just like how ABC used to have those Saturday morning cartoons, they were now going to do it with Pixar films. <sighs> I was so excited just remembering all those cartoons that I used to watch as a kid, like Reboot, oh, Carmen Sandiego, and all those programs that I used to watch on ABC. Finally, they were going to do that with Pixar films. Or were they? Well, one day I was about to clean up shop going to pick up my keys and head home, but then I noticed something. Right sitting next to my keys, which I suppose in hindsight I, I really shouldn't have left them out on the table, but there was a box, a VHS tapes box. The Monsters, Inc. Pilot, it said, and crudely drawn Sharpie. Pilot? This was already a feature film. A pilot of what? Did, did they leave me a pilot of the film itself? Regardless, I picked up the box and I tripped over my feet. My coffee spilt. But I wasn't about to sue Pixar for my own clumsiness. In hindsight, maybe this was kind of a metaphor for what was about to happen. A metaphor for my clumsiness of watching a tape that wasn't meant for my eyes. Well, it wasn't like we had some sort of security alarm or something to go off because someone took a VHS tape home from the desk. So I did that. I grabbed my keys, hopped into my car. Really, it's my mom's car, but she allows me to borrow it. And I drove back home. Mom asked me if I wanted any dinner, but I already brought Taco Bell and Mountain Dew home with me, so I was pretty much set. I sat down, plugged in the coax cables, and got ready to watch what I thought would be the program of my life. Not because it had to be anything great, of course, but just because it was something I was inadvertently involved with. In hindsight, I wish I had nothing to do with it at all. When I turned on the tape, there weren't any previews for other movies or things like that, because again, this wasn't a movie. 
this was for a hypothetical television program. There was no theme song, no opening credits, but it went directly to a live action house. There was a table, some chairs, and no one was sitting in any of them. There was sort of a slow, ominous, mysterious ambient music playing in the background, but I didn't pay it any mind. I used to play piano in high school, so I was kind of accustomed to those sad, dissonant key chords that were playing. Suddenly, a man walked in. No, it wasn't John Goodman or Billy Crystal or Steve Buscemi. It took me a little bit to recognize who it was because I knew that I knew who that was, but I didn't know why. It was Chris Hansen. I'd like for you to have a seat, viewer, he said as he sat down. We talk a lot about monsters, cartoon monsters, fictional monsters, Cyclops monsters, big blue furry monsters, he began. Some are innocuous like the cookie monster. Well, other than the grocery bills, of course, he said. I guess he was trying to be funny. The camera zoomed into his eyes really fast, actually. It it caught me off guard. (sighs) I spilt my Taco Bell all over my pants. (sighs) The truth of the matter is that the worst monsters of all, the camera zoomed in deeper and deeper. Veins were snapping in his eyes. His eyes were blood red, like what sometimes happens if you press your hand a little bit too hard down on the side of your face, and you could see the blood oozing out of your cheeks. On the inside, anyway. We know what lies within the hearts of man. The man-made monster. And so, viewer, I'd like for you to have a seat. I'd like for you to sit down. As I bring in someone who knows all about you. And your unethical manners. What the fuck was I watching? I was going to get up and turn off the tape, but I realized that I had hot... Tex Mexican imitation food all over my pants, as well as the coffee from earlier that I never bothered to clean up. I didn't want to get that junk all over the floor. There was a pause in the music, and then a man came in wearing a white collared shirt. He had the most distracting burnt orange hair, not literally on fire, of course, but like that burnt orange hue. Have a seat, George, Chris Hansen said. I would be happy to. The man sat down. George, white collar shirt. Nothing. mm, Well, something rang a bell, but I couldn't say why. He popped what appeared to be meatballs, like Swedish meatballs, into his mouth. Was this some sort of political film about the Swedish? I thought the Swedish were always neutral. Or was that the Swiss? Tell me what you did, George. Chris Hansen said. Well, I went to the zoo yesterday, and I must say that things did not go the way I had planned. He showed a photo. It looked like a gorilla. A gorilla on its own? Why was this tape showing me a picture of a gorilla? 